Welcome to R Tip 14, and this is an awesome R Tip. This is where we're going to be looking at principal component analysis, and this is going to be an introduction to PCA, but it's also going to be really focusing on how we can extract information out of a PCA diagram like this. So this is an interactive visualization. We're going to build this today. So this is cool. Um, what we have is a bunch of different vehicles that have been plotted using uh, principal components, and you can see there's principal components component number one, which explains 26% of the variance, and principal component number two. So this is about 30% of the vari variance, the total variance in the data set that's being explained in this visualization. And what we can see is that there's kind of these clusters going on between vehicles. So down here we have a very distinct cluster of Chevrolet Corvettes, and these are being clustered because they're in a class of two-seater a drive of rear wheel drive and a, uh, a fuel type of premium. So these vehicles are getting kind of pushed down here towards the middle. Um, and we could say that these are kind of like the higher end vehicles. Then over here, we've got city and highway mileage that are the, the highest loadings. And you can see Volkswagen Beetle, Volkswagen Jetta, Honda Civic, Toyota Corolla, and so on are being grouped over here. And then on the other end, we have the um, class SUV, uh, four-wheel drive, class pickup. And if we zoom in on this, we can see we've got Dodge Ram, uh, Chev Chevy, Tahoe, uh, Dodge Durango, uh, Toyota Land Cruiser, and so on. So this is what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to be building this visualization, so showing how you can mine your data set for information using a PCA diagram. All right, so uh, what you need to do to get started, um, you're going to want to go to GitHub and do a git pull, and you're going to pull down uh, your 014 Visualize PCA. And if you have not set this up yet, what you need to do is you need to go and sign up for the weekly R tips. This is going to get you access to all of the code that you see here, and including this 014 Visualization PCA. Um, once you download that code, you're going to go in here and we're going to open up this 014 visualize PCA.R file. That's what's opened up over here. I'm going to also open up the outline so you can follow along and uh, we're, we're going to go down through it. So we're going to be focusing on PCA and visualizing interactively uh, the PCA diagram. So the libraries that we're going to be using today, we're going to be loading Tidyverse, Broom, and GG Fortify. Um, and the data set we're going to be using is the MPG data set. It's a data set of 234 different vehicles. Um, and actually some of them are the same vehicles, just different models, different years, and so on. And what we're going to be doing is taking this data and uh, wrangling it next. So um, we're going to be doing some data wrangling. If you have never done data wrangling before, data wrangling is super, super critical. Um, it's the, basically what we need to do in order to be able to format the data correctly for PCA. So um, I, t I cover data wrangling in detail uh, in my 101 course. So weeks two and three uh, covers what's called dplyr. That's the main library that we're going to be doing data wrangling. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take this data set and I'm going to kind of split it up column wise. Um, what I'm going to be doing is looking at the manufacturing model and I'm going to separate that out from the rest of the columns and the, the rest of the columns are going to be kind of how I develop my PCA. So before we dive into this, um, just keep in mind that PCA is an algorithm that you utilizes these principal components, but it needs numeric data for it to work. So we're going to have to go through some, uh, some, some data manipulations. The first thing I'm going to do is um, it, uh, it cannot accept the manufacturing model. And these are really just our labels that we want to uh, be able to kind of overlay on our plot. So we're going to extract those. So I'm going to do take my MPG data set, grab the manufacturing model. Um, I'm also going to create a new column here. So if I just do run this, I've got manufacturing model. Um, I'm going to create a new column called vehicle, which just combines the manufacturer and the model with an underscore. That's all I'm doing here. And then I'm going to add the row ID to the, to, um, the, uh, as a column. So, and this is just going to help me kind of keep track of my, my labels and then also my features when I go to uh, create my features. So I'm going to save this as Y underscore Tibble. And this is basically my labels here. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take, grab my features, um, which are just going to be in my MPG data set. It's going to be everything from here through here. So displacement all the way over to class. 
So I'm going to grab those features and this is going to be what I really use to develop my principal component analysis. It's going to be taking these kind of independent variables and what we're going to be trying to do is mine these for insights to see where the highest variation happens in the data set. And when I talk about variation, that's basically what PCA does under the hood is it takes your data set and looks at kind of all of the variants and tries to explain that variance. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a row ID to the column, and this is just for an or organization purposes. I want to add, um, keep track of all of these rows. I'm going to be doing some manipulations, and I just want to make sure they don't get out of order. So um, it's just kind of a housekeeping thing. Um, the next thing I need to do, so PCA works with numeric data. So displacement and um, fields like year are, are going to be fine because these are double and inter integer but fields like transmission here, we have character data and we need to take care of that. So we have to come up with a strategy in order to be able to encode that as numeric data. Uh, and the strategy that we're going to be using is called one hot encoding. So the first one is the easiest. Um, I'm just going to take this transmission and I'm going to take uh, auto and manual and I'm going to split those two out. Um, it's very easy to do uh, in here. I'm just using a mutate and I'm going to add two new columns and one is going to be detecting whether or not auto is present and one is going to be detecting whether it manual is present and then they're going to be converted to numeric so that's what this next couple lines of code here does is it just takes that transmission and that's this field and breaks it out into these columns transmission auto transmission manual and i'm also deselecting trans because we no longer need that field so now these are double uh, which is numeric and pca is going to be able to work with them so it's just, again, ones and zeros, whether or not they're automatic and whether or not they're manual. Okay, the next thing, uh, now it's going to get a little more complicated because we have fields like drive, which can be multiple. It can be front wheel, it could be four wheel drive, or it could be rear wheel drive. So uh, we're going to have to use a slightly different technique. Um, I'm going to use this function called pivot wider. But before we can use pivot wider, we have to create just kind of a column with ones in here. And what this is going to be, because when you pivot, you need to, and we're going to pivot this drive column. Um, basically what that, that's going to do is going to spread these out over here, these columns with F4 and so on. Um, but it needs a value to put in those. So what I'm going to do is if F is present, there, this value of one is going to be spread out. Um, and if it's not, I'm going to fill with a zero. So that's what this pivot wider does. So when I run this, so I'm going to run all of these here, control enter. I now have drive uh, front, drive four, and drive rear wheel. So this is four wheel drive, front wheel drive, and rear, rear wheel drive. And you can see there's ones in here. When it's front wheel drive, zero is when it's not front, front wheel drive. Okay. Uh, and then if you get that concept, we just need to replicate that for class and for fuel type. So class uh, compact fuel type uh, can be premium or it can be regular. Um, so we're just going to kind of do the same thing here. Um, so I'm going to run actually all of this, this full code here, which looks like this. I'm going to just hit the shift control enter. And then what my data set that's been wrangled now looks like is something like this, where I've got 23 different columns. Um, and what I want to be able to do is mine that for, for the relationship. So that's what's in this X tibble column or X tibble um, variable. All right, now we're ready to do some PCA. Uh, PCA is really easy to do. Once you have the data in the right format, um, you can provide a formula. It has a formula interface. So if I just type formula in here, um, this is the formula. Um, the data that we're providing it is this X tibble. And I'm telling it to scale. Uh, I'm setting that equal to true. Uh, this is really important if you don't scale it. So these feature in here like year is going to super be super dominant and you don't want that to happen um, I actually the first time I went through this I forgot to put scale true and there was a big separation by year and it looked really weird so um, this is the trick here get this right um, do your formula um, as a function of basically what dot is is all of the columns in this data set and then I'm subtracting out row ID because row ID is not important 
and then um, the data that I'm providing it is this X table and I'm telling it to scale true. So we run this, we now have in our environment a fitted PCA object. Um, if you want, you can check out this object. So fit underscore PCA, it looks something like this. Looks kind of crazy, provides some, um, these are all of our principal components and, and such. Um, and what you can do is you can use like the, the broom library to um, kind of more easily take a look at this object. So you can do like tidy, I believe it has a tidy, yes. Uh, you can get your PCAs in a, in a tidy format. Um, but what we're really interested in doing is visualizing it. So there's this package called ggfortify. So once you have this fitted object, um, you can use this function called autoplot. And um, if I do question mark autoplot dot uh, pc or pr comp, um, because that's what this object is, you can kind of go down through and you can see how to develop this. Um, this is a really powerful, um, powerful function because what it does is it develops a ggplot. And ggplot is covered in my 101 course week four. It's basically how you do all visualizations in R. So you need to know this library. Um, so basically what we do is we add an object in here and this is our fit underscore PCA. And we're going to tell it to compare PCA number one, which is going to have our highest variance explained with PCA two, which is going to have the next highest various variance explained. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to visualize this. Um, we have to add some labels, otherwise we're not going to know, you know, which vehicles um, are being mapped to each of the data points. And then what we want to do is also have some loadings as well. Um, and the loadings are going to be the errors in our plot. So I'm just going to run this and we'll take a look at it. This produces a, a non-interactive ggplot. So this is kind of a lot of information to take in. Uh, but what would be really nice is if we could zoom in on it. So that's what this next function does. So it's the, from the Plotly library, we use ggplotly. And when I run this now, it becomes an interactive plot. So I can actually zoom in on different sections and kind of see which, um, which uh, uh, vehicles are lining up with each of the different loadings from the PCA. So a couple things to keep in mind here, we're plotting PC number one versus PC number two. If you wanna change that, say you wanna do PC one versus PC three, control enter, control enter, control enter. And now you can see we've got PC one versus PC three and this 9.7%, that means we're uh, plotting, uh, th that means PC three contains 9.7% of the variance explained in the data set. Um, I'm gonna change this back to two. Control enter, control enter, control enter. And what we have here are the, what are called the loadings. Think of these as just our labels. These are our column names, um, or yeah, our column names. So we've got uh, fuel type regular is a loading that's pushing data up this way. Fuel type premium is a, is a loading that's pushing data down this way. Class two seater is a loading that is being pushing data down this way drive rear wheel is, is uh, pushing data down this way so you can see we've got clusters in here and the things that most explain these this cluster here is the fact that these are fuel type premium class two seater and drive rear wheel so you can see we've got ford mustang and chevrolet chevrolet corvettes kind of down here um, how you would read this then is uh, highway and city are the are just loadings that are pushing data this way. And you can see that uh, a lot of these vehicles have, uh, are like Honda Civics, Toyota Corollas, uh, Toyota Camrys, uh, Honda Civic, uh, Volkswagen Passat, and so on. Audi A4 is kind of being pushed over this way. Um, and also you can see uh, drive front wheel seems to be kind of a high loading. And then over here, what's pushing data over this way is things like uh, class pickup, drive four wheel, uh, class SUV, high, high number of cylinders, and uh, fuel displacement is very high. So you can see the types of vehicles over here, Lincoln Navigator, uh, Nissan uh, Pathfinder, Jeep Grand Cherokee four wheel drive, Chevrolet, uh, 1500 Suburban uh, and so on and then you got pick some pickups up here like Dodge Ram and, and so on so 
that's how this PCA diagram works. It's really cool, it's really powerful, and it can help you be able to understand your data a lot better. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday Free R Tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here. Put your email address in and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code, and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.